Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Poolside Chat. I'm Pastor Chris Ireland. Hey, last week I shared my story of when I was challenged in my faith to make myself firm in my faith, firm in what I believe. And um, I was thinking of what to say today. And I just got to thinking of various people that I've read about and that I've met. You know, I remember one girl that I met when I was teaching at a school. She had grown up in the church. Uh, parent and father was a pastor. Parents, great, great ministry leaders. Really great household. Good Christian life. She went through Awana. And she went through Awana through 12th grade. Awana is a, a great program for young children to learn about faith and become grounded in their faith. And she was sharing a story where she didn't want to become a Christian because she didn't see the need. She just did not want to become a Christian. And uh, I never got to hear all the reasons why I was fascinated that she could learn all this and not want to become a Christian and live this and experience it. Um, now when I knew her, she had given her life to God, faith in Christ. The reason I started this was a question came up about Dan Barker. Dan Barker wrote a book called Losing Faith in Faith. Dan Barker is one of the founders and leaders of the Freedom from Religion Foundation. Um, Mikey Weinstein, you probably read about a lot. He goes around and protests anyone who has faith in God. And he went to Azusa University. I did not read his book. I actually looked for it for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I couldn't find it. One available in the libraries. And I didn't want to buy it. Um, I don't know. I didn't want to support him, I guess. But what I did learn is that he had led people to Christ. He had given his life to Christ. He was a charismatic, a good evangelical. He became a pastor. And what had happened is his church burned down. And it made him wonder why, if God existed would he hurt his ministry and all the good he was doing and it led him on a journey to explore faith, explore scripture and realize from his perspective that this was not real and it was not written by God. Sad story, uh, I know a young man grew up in the Catholic Church, really, really good family and he was an altar boy. He got sucked into a cult. And the reason was, after growing up in the Catholic Church, after going through catechism and all the teachings, he wasn't firmly established in what he believed, and he was led astray. Um, Bart Ehrman was what you would call one of us. He checked all the boxes. He went to Wheaton College. He went to the Moody Bible Institute. These are like the premier evangelical Christian places. He became a pastor. He always believed the Bible was without error. Every jot and tittle, every period, every comma was put down by God. And as he stuttered, studied higher criticism, literary criticism, the actual writings, he saw that there were a lot of writings, a lot of changes by the scribes, many minor, a lot, some major as he describes it. And if God was able to write his word through the hands of men, why couldn't he preserve it? Um, and it led him to become an agnostic and now an atheist. He taught, he was a New Testament scholar, and he left the faith. I think of Lee Strobel. Lee Strobel was a lawyer and a teacher. His wife came to faith in Christ, which sent him on a two-year journey 
to find out what Christianity was, to prove that it was wrong. And he proved that it was true and became a Christian. And I think of two other people, Sarah Salviander and Hugh Ross. You may or may not know their names. They were physicists, they were astronomers. They were agnostics or theists as they described themselves. And it was actually through science that they realized God was real and had to design it and that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh and the Bible is true and they gave themselves to faith in Christ. The question is, and what I'm gonna talk about next week, is how people that have been touched by God or given their lives to God, how could they leave faith? And uh, there are a couple of answers to that. But what's, why I share all this is not why people leave faith, but look, there are people who come to faith that didn't want to. And I'm going to go back to a verse that I used last week, Colossians 1.23. I don't want to misquote God. If you continue in your faith, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope in the gospel, held out in the gospel. See, step back for a second, this way. It's not that Paul is challenging people to stay in the faith, but behind this is the message that people will leave and move from the faith. And the question I was asked is why? And why I want to share all these names and stories today is not because I just want to share stories, but I want to show that this is not unusual. And next week, I'm going to start looking and delving into why these people, and in particular, Bart Ehrman, Dan Barker, have left faith. So, God knew this would happen. That's why God challenges us to remain firm. But questions are good. Um, ask these questions. Express these doubts. And like I shared in my story, let's see if we can come to answers and become even more firmly established in God. Guys, be encouraged. Um, hey, we're going to get a storm today here. Well, tomorrow, next day here. So uh, hopefully just going to be a bunch of rain. But thanks for joining me. Remember that all your friends know, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, at FL Compass Church. And... Uh, be firm. We'll see you uh, Saturday. Have a wonderful day.